I'll just uh, get some sleep and then come over here to Elk River Falls area this morning and try to shoot some water. And, uh, getting out of the car, I found this little spot. It's got some nice little rapids off this little slick rock and some mountain laurel in the background that's uh, still in bloom. So I'm going to see if I can capture that and kind of go over the workflow. I know this is going to be a portrait oriented image. Hopefully, they'll drop the camera in the water. As I mentioned in previous videos, my first step when shooting around water is putting my circular polarizer on. This is, to me, one of the most in important tools when shooting water. And here you can see that I have rotated it to full effect. The glare on the water is gone, the detail in the white water is visible, and the texture in the rocks underneath the water is now visible again. This is, to me, very important for creating separation in the water between the white water and the water that doesn't have any motion in it. Right now my base exposure at ISO 50 and F8 0.4 seconds. This is a scenario where I would not advise being in the water. As you can see behind me where that sun is starting to hit the trees, that is Elk River Falls and that is a big fall and so a slip and fall in this area could be very uh, catastrophic. So if I'm ever going to get in the water it's going to be in a place where I know that a slip and fall is only going to cause me to get wet and maybe dunk the camera, which will be awful. But uh, falling in here and getting swept down the current uh, could be life threatening. So, always paying attention to what is happening um, downstream to make sure you don't get yourself hurt. I'm going to focus stack this image also so that I can get the water here in the foreground and then get an image for the rhododendron in the back for the mountain. As you can see on the image on the left, I was able to combine a circular polarizer with a three-stop neutral density filter, leaving my aperture at f8 to avoid diffraction, and still able to get out to a 1.6 second exposure. The circular polarizer also cut the glare on the water and brought out the greens and the leaves in the distance, all combined to create the final image on the right after post-production. I'm still 
still staying at F8, so I'm not having to crank the, the aperture way down to something tiny. Well, as you can see back behind me, the light's starting to build. I think I'm going to bail from this one and see if I can go catch up with the falls before the sunlight hits it. I moved on from that location and shot Elk River Falls before the sunlight came up. But I'm going to save that for my Roan Mountain trip videos that are going to be coming up on the channel soon. After lunch, I ventured out on my way toward Carver's Gap and stopped at another waterfall location along the way. And that's the next stop for today's episode. It's a little overcast at the moment, so that's kind of perfect for trying to shoot some of these little waterfalls and creeks that are uh, on the way up to Carver's Gap. Uh, we stopped here last year and I determined that to get the shot I was really after, I was going to have to be in the water. And last year I didn't have the right footwear uh, to get in the water, but uh, today I do. I'm standing a little more than ankle deep, almost knee deep in uh, the nice cold water. Um, uh, but a friend of mine asked what kind of shoes I would recommend for getting in the water. Um, and I've done, uh, I've used a couple of different kinds of shoes. Um, the ones I like the most are something like a Keen, that's a waterproof shoe that has toe protection and nice uh, rock gripping soles. Uh, I've tried felt bottom shoes and while they work really well in the water, outside of the water they're really kind of lousy. And the rocks and dry rocks outside of the water and hiking tear them up pretty bad. I've tried plain old aqua shoes, and I've tried regular old old hiking shoes. And while those work, they kind of get real heavy uh, because the water just starts to collect inside of them. Um, but Keens, um, they drain. And so that makes it so that uh, the water doesn't stay in and they're not as heavy. And none of their materials are real absorbent. So you end up uh, with a nice, it dries out fast and it doesn't get super heavy. Um, you know, when I was talking this morning about how uh, I don't go in the water when I'm uh, upstream or close to being upstream from a large feature, um, there's a reason for that. Being in the water, it really doesn't take much to take your feet out from under you. Uh, you know, getting to this spot I went on right now, the, the water at most was, uh, you know, almost knee deep. Uh, but the rocks are slick and the water's moving. And when you walk through the rapids portion, it really doesn't take much to take you out. So I, uh, I always advise being cautious uh, when trying to get in the water. Uh, I know not everyone's gonna do that, but I am because uh, it's not worth it to me to fall and get hurt or damage my gear or something like that. So uh, rather than try to set up two cameras and show what I'm gonna do here, I just figured I'd uh, run video and do the, foot, the stills with the same camera. Um, so right now what I have is the scene in front of me and this is with no filtration. And this is with the CPL put on. You can see it darkened it up a little bit. But then when I turn it, we really can dial in the glare dial out the glare. With this, the little white waters sections don't show up. We dial that CPL in and it really does. So, I'm going to go ahead and take a few images and then we'll, with just the CPL, uh, and then I will put on an ND filter and show the changes there also. As you can see in this image with no filters used, the glare on the rocks and the glare on the water is a little bit distracting. And then we move to the image with the CPL filter on, but not activated. And it actually kind of accentuates the glare on both the wet rocks and the water. But turning the CPL to the activated rotation cuts down on the glare on the water, on the wet rocks, but also darkens the greens. I've done nothing else to the greens in this image other than the same edits that were done to the original images the greens start to really pop and the, the glare on the leaves is gone. Okay, so I made a couple of images with the CPL only. My exposure time before the circular polarizer was put on was a tenth of a second and afterwards it was a third of a second. 
but to me that's still really not enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put on a neutral density filter and this is a three stop. And without adjusting the exposure of the video, you can see just how much that affected the exposure. It darkens it. And that's the only way I can really show or explain to someone that doesn't understand how ND filters work. It's that they just darken the exposure. They let less light in so that you have to increase your exposure time to get back to the same duration or exposure value that you were before. So this went... This is going to go from a third of a second to quite a bit slower than that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop this video, take a couple frames, and then come back to explain that. As you can see, adding a three-stop neutral density filter has allowed me to get out to three seconds. I've also been able to open my aperture up to nine and a half instead of being at f11 like I was before. This is a better sweet spot for this particular lens. I also like this longer exposure, but I decided that three seconds might be a little too long and that the texture in the water was not where I wanted it to be. So I shortened my exposure to 1.5 seconds knowing that it would keep the details in the shadows, the details in the highlights, and give me that kind of moody image that I was looking for for this location. I hope that this week's on location session gives a little bit of insight into how I work when I'm out in the field shooting a waterfall or a creek. And that concludes the Waterworks series. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked this video this week, please hit that like button. Leave me a comment down in the comment section. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. Hit that bell to get notifications. I try to do a video every week. Until next time, may the good light find you.